everyone. Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop, and we're very happy to see you here today. We're working on our final block of our Christmas 2017. <laughs> Pop gave me a crazy look there behind the camera. I was like, what's going on? Uh, anyways, our final block of our 2017 Christmas quilt, and we're so happy to be on this stage of it because it looks beautiful when it's laid out, except for obviously these two blocks that we still need to do. And uh, you have a little bit of creative um, play on your end, whether you want to add thicker strips, smaller strips, whatever, to block out each block to a 13 and a half. This is last year's Big Beauty here uh, that we did. And uh, there's a couple of blocks that uh, I, des or, uh, I designed, Pop designed, and his sister designed. And and, uh, and of course, there's a couple of ones I'm sure you'll be able to think that are there, or you see that are uh, famous from, uh, uh, hold on, Lorna McMahon, her reindeer, and her uh, penguin here. Very, very cute. And of course, one of my favorites is the mittens and Mandy the snowman. I used yarn for his arms. And then for the angel, which is one of kind of my designs, I got inspired by one of the Pinterest I'd seen. And I used yarn for her halo as well. So this is one of my favorites. Had a lot of compliments on it. And I like hanging it up, especially this time of year, uh, because it just kind of reflects one of the things that we like about Christmas, you know, all the, all the different things. And, you know, and uh, the different tech towels of it anyways I like 3d and texture okay so what we're gonna do today is you're gonna make two blocks and you're gonna make two stockings now pop will have this pattern available for you tomorrow Sunday so be patient it will be posted not to worry and you get to choose two out of the three available stocking shapes to use okay so of course there's very self-explanatory Victorian boot classic stocking or elf boot okay so he's going to get you so these print out on one page each but you need to keep this pretty much the same size because in proportion this really fits exactly what that should be right so and the same with the classic boot for the cuff or the Victorian, whether you put the elf one on, which still looks pretty awesome, or the regular cuff. So there's lots of options you can play with. You can put the elf cuff on the regular boot. You can put the regular cuff on the elf boot. You can do whatever you like. You can make your own cuff, you know, make it, make it your own way, okay? So those are the options that you're gonna choose from, and you need to make two. So you choose two Victorian boots, two classic stockings, two elves, you know, whatever you want. If you find that on the block that have your 13 and a half by 13 and a half, you're like, oh, well, geez, I can fit two of those if I go side by side and then two on there and they represent four of your family members. Fantastic. If you only have like two or three people in, then, you know, put whatever, whatever you want. I mean, it's completely up to you. There's enough space in the block to add two, you know, possibly even three if you were to get really creative sort of thing. I mean, that's, you know, whatever, it's up to you. But, and these are my two blocks that I'm using. I kind of had to piece out a little bit more of my blue that I had left over because I was really only working from a scrappy bag. So I didn't know exactly what I had. I thought I had quite a bit. And of course, getting close to the end, it's, you know, we're getting nipping and tucking on the fabric. So I've chose my snowflakey blue that I had here and then just bordered it out with a little bit of white that I have on some other blocks that I have bordered out as well. So it does match. And then I have a nice, oops, I need that, don't go away. And then a nice big solid chunk like I did for the holly leaf, uh, which will be another boot set. So, okay. So Pop said he really liked this one. So we're gonna put his classic boot there. And of course I get the elf boot. That'll go over on the solid blue. And I love that. So, and uh, I know he loves cardinals. So we'll make him the cardinals and me the teddy bears. And we'll just have some fun. And I'm not, it's not that I'm excluding Munchkin out. Uh, it's just, we, we just want to put two boots on. So, you know, I don't, don't think that we're excluding the Munchkin out. Okay. All right. So uh, I want to trace out. Whether you use the heat and bond or the heat and press or the stitch and stay or whatever it is that you want to use, uh, I want to trace out, I thought I had a pin here, oh there we go, um, my little cuff because I want to use, I do want to put the elf cuff on the elf boot. So, oh good gravy, he's been, I tell you, as soon as he tells the camera goes on and it looks like I'm talking to myself, it's all crazy mama time and he starts meowing. So anyways, you just want to kind of trace this out the cuff 
and then you're going to press it to what you're going to use as a representation of your cough. And of course, that did not work at all. I need some sort of a chalk pencil or a pen, a pen, pen that actually works. I don't want to use anything too dark though. Hold on, I may have to, oh, I have another pen here. Let's try this, shall we? Oh, the joys. It just doesn't want to write on this stuff. This is more of a, a tough interfacing. I must, all right, chalk pencil it is. But the kids last night when we were playing, kind of broke it. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. All right, there we go. So we'll just do a little chalk mark where the little sharp points for that elf cut are, and then we're going to adhere this to our little cuff fabric. If you want to ruler this out, that's totally up to you. Okay, and then that's that's one. See right there, and I've just traced it the best I can. Like I said, you could use a ruler if you wanted to, if you want to be that precise. I like the little bit of uh, different organicness of it if it's not such a complete straight line. You could tell somebody, you know, try to trace it. Okay, so there's my other one, okay? And then I'm gonna adhere those to my two different cuff fabrics that I have. I like the stars was gonna be for the um, cardinals and the um, holly was going to be for the bears, that part of sort of thing. So um, that would be mine, and this would be Pops. So let's just adhere that real quick onto the stars. And especially if you had something that was more, you know, uh, uh, directional or was, um, you know, had more of a personal theme to you, had a letter or a name or something like that, or even a word, you know, just make sure you're doing it correctly. So when you're placing it on the stocking, it's going to look, it's going to look the way you want it to. Okay. So just press that for a second or two adhere it. This is just more of a, um, it's not a heat and bond. It's more like a, t um, a tough interfacing. I wanted to have a little bit of structure to the stocking when I stitched it around. Okay. So we're going to flip that over. Make sure we don't have any extra fluffs. Thanks for the message on Facebook, whoever that was. <laughs> it's probably somebody trying to pick up their stuff. <laughs> I've got jackets galore done and quilts galore done. It's been very busy week here in the quilt shop. I'm very happy to say that. Very happy to say. Okay, so we're just gonna put that off to the side. And of course, I, like I said, I chose my classic and my elf stocking. So let's put our squares off. And I want to make sure that the classic stocking is getting in, because I've adhered this already to this fabric. There's uh, a couple of cardinals here, or a couple of birds here, and then there's a couple of cardinals here. So it's a, kind of a mix. I was hoping to at least get one of these cardinals in there, if not at least the two on the toe. So it all depends on how you're going to place it. Actually, I kind of like that. It's got, almost got the two and the two. So that, that to me looks really pretty. So I think what I'll do is I'll try and trace that on the outs, on the, this side. You can just tell, okay. And then just do a little trace around. And if you want to give yourself, a, if you say, oh, well, you know what, I'd like a bigger stocking than this, Laura Lynn, then you make sure you give yourself a nice little seam allowance all the way around. Give yourself another half an inch or a quarter of an inch or whatever it is that you want to do. So to, to trace it out. Clearly the chalk is the only tool of choice for today. My pins do not want to work. Okay, and I, like I said, I'm not the best artiste drawer in the whole wide world, but I do give it my best effort. And I try to give it a little bit of uniqueness because that's just whose I am. Okay. I really like the heel. I really like the heel. I have this. I I tried to draw out a few stockings. I'm. They looked really odd. I just can't get it. I don't know. I'm just like I said. I'm not the best drawer in the whole wide world, but I do try. So, just come up there and do a little line. All right. And so that to me, if I want to make sure, I can almost hold it up to the light to make sure if it's like tracing out, that's where I want to be. It cuts a little bit off of this cardinal right here, but it really gets the majority of the birds. And that's why I think I know Pop 
Pop would like. He would like the majority of the birds there so instead of just majority of the green, right? So I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut it out. But at first, I'm going to do the same to my elf boot. So I know since I did the toe this way and because this is where you have the choice, I want the other toe to go the same way. Like they're both facing into the quilt, wherever I may place them. They're either going to face in or face out. I'd prefer them to face in. That's how I'm going to lay them out. So you'll see that at the end of the video, how I have placed out each block in the rows and how they get laid out. And then probably, hopefully, a picture of each individual block, but that may be saved for the next video. So uh, when we do all the, the putting them all together. So just wait for that. We're going to do as quilt as you go. Do it right on your domestic, so don't be stressing about it. But like I said, I want my toes to go the same way. I know it seems kind of quirky, but these are things you got to think about, right? So we're going to leave that there. So I chose this really cute teddy bear fabric. It's like hanging from the stars. It's got cute little sweaters and scarves and stuff. Now I want to make sure either I can put it this way or put it on the other side. It doesn't matter. I'm going to trace it out and cut it out. Uh, who, who do I like best? Uh, I have a lots of room to play here. Do I like that little guy? He's really awesome with his star. You know, this is my stocking. I get to choose, choose the way I like him. You know, like I could go this way, I can go that way, I can go any way I like. So I, I really like this guy up here. He's got the star. And then I think we're going to tweak him and get the little one with the crown and then just trace this out this way. Okay, and then I'm going to cut on this little purple chalk line. Okay, and I'm making it just a tiny little smidgy bigger than the pattern Pop had printed out for me. And they are, let me just measure this, uh, it is approximately nine inches, if it goes right to the edge of the toe here on the nine, uh, by... Uh, six and a half okay so nine by six and a half which is great to fill up that little square that you want because like I said you could possibly put two or put one right central you know it's up to you have have some play have some fun okay and of course you're gonna add a cuff so whether you add the cuff you know a little bit above or right at the 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 trim line that's up to you okay so come around, but you really want to make sure you're getting that pronounced curl, that curl to that elf, elf stocking, okay? So. Come in there and get that little curl. Got to make sure you get that little tip, that little tip to that elf stocking. No, Mr. Clive, you're not going out. Okay. There we go. So I've got a couple of got. I got the buddy. I got a bear here, bear here, bear here, bear there. I'm happy with the layout of my stocking. Okay, and this will gonna is gonna be the top to uh, mine right here, which I thought was really nice with the contrast of the creamy colored and the green, and then the beautiful stars and the cardinal on pop. So let's just put those off to the side. Though I love the Victorian boot too. Uh, I'm more of the elf. <laughs> That's just me. That's just me. Okay, so we're going to cut these out. Oops. Oops. Okay, we're just going to cut out what we need here. And I use my multi purpose scissors here. This does batting and um, this sort of uh, interfacing sort of thing. Okay. And if you decided you wanted a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, this is, you know, this is your choice. This is your, your choice. You have 13 and a half inches uh, by 13 and a half inches to fill. Uh, fill it any way you like it. If you want to make it so they look like they're on the mantle or like on a clothesline or, you know, hanging, hanging, you know, randomly on a wall or something, that's completely up to you. Okay, so there is my little cuff. Okay. Now I want to cut out my boot. Like you can either do this by this way or by rotary cutter. I'm going to try and cut right on that purple line to the inside of the purple line. Um, though I, it's just chalk. So, you know, once, you know, a couple of rubbings and it'll disappear. Um, but, uh, you know, you really don't want to see that purple chalk as you're stitching. Now take your time to go around those curvatures. I'm just going to do a little, get some of the bulk off here. I find it a little bit easier to work with if you get a little bit of the chunk. Instead of you fighting with the fabric, don't fight with the fabric. It's not going to get you anywhere. 
except frustrated. <laughs> okay. Let's just make sure you're doing that little curve and the point. Get that little curve, that little tippy tippy curl for that elf toe. We got Munchkin a pair of slippers. Oh well, geez, probably what eight years ago, Pop those those uh, elf <laughs> slippers. I loved them so much. I was like, I wish they fit my feet. Oh, okay, that didn't sit. Okay, obviously I have to trim that a little bit because he he was a little wide on the top there. And this is where you're gonna have to tweak things a little bit, right? Okay, just kind of maybe not so edged out. A little bit more. Okay, just a little bit more of a trim. Shouldn't have been ambitious with my uh, tracing on the outside. Lesson learned. Just a wee, a wee trimmings. I have to make sure I do that to pop stocking. Can't have his stocking bigger than mine. <laughs> okay, there we go. It was just needed just a tiny little trim, as you can tell right here, right? So, there we go. There's my stocking. Woohoo! And then, of course, you can always put um, like a white heel, and then you can do an applique stitch. I mean, there's so much you can do. You can add sequins, you can add beads, you can stitch their name, you can put their letter. You know, Laurelyn's not quite going to fit on there, but we could really, really try. Um, but I have an embroidered stocking from last year. So you should check out the video. It was actually a lot of fun. A really cool hat I had in it, too. Okay, so we'll move that stuff off to the side. We know that is for my square right here. Okay. And I'm going to put that on a bit of an angle because, you know, I'm just that way. And we'll put that right over there. And now we're going to do the other one here. Okay. I want to make sure I'm cutting the cuff a little bit bigger this time around because I want to make sure it fits pop stocking. I don't care if it's bigger than mine. He deserves it. <laughs> he works hard. Okay, so there's a the little cuff. And now, like I say, rotary cutter or just scissors, whatever it is, it makes it easier for you to get your project done. Like I said, cut the bulk off. Don't deal with any more, less, like don't deal with any stress that you don't have to. So if it's going to be a pain in the butt and get in your way, then get rid of it. Fabric-wise. <laughs> Hundreds of husbands go missing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Pop's like, why'd you go there? <laughs> all right, it was a little loose on the top there. I just want to make sure it's all adhered. Okay. <laughs> all right, now I'm just going to cut on the line and trim that out. Okay, now, hopefully, ooh, bibbidi bobbidi boo. It's beautiful. And there's Pop stocking. Okay. So like I said, he really liked this square that I built out. I told him, you know, pick whatever one you want. And I was going to put them on a bit of an angle anyways. And if you want your stocking to fill it up, fill it up. If you, like I said, at the beginning here, if you have, you know, family members and you've got like 15 of them, maybe make your stockings a little bit smaller. Maybe go with that size, the original printout or something like that. And then, you know, whatever. It's up to you. But you have two, stock, two squares to fill, okay? So, but just so you, to fit really nicely on a square, okay. Now, we're just going to pin this where we want it. And actually, no, I think I like, we liked it this way, didn't we? We liked it th this way. It was a little bit more of a contrast between the white and the blue and the white as we were, you know, forming the toe. Okay, so we like that. And then we're just going to pin this down and do an applique stitch all the way around. And I'll do the both of them at once. And this is where if you want your stocking to be a bit bigger, you can actually move your cuff all the way to the top. You know, we want, oh, okay, I want to extend my, my, instead of having it right there at the edge, you can move it all the way up to the top by maybe overlapping by maybe, you know, uh, a quarter of an inch or something like that, even an eighth of an inch. And since you're going to applique it down, it just gives that little bit more of a depth to your stocking, right? So, 
makes it a little bit bigger if you want to fill up the space. Okay, so we'll just put that there. And I just have a nice uh, goldy tan kind of thread in the machine. I thought it just would complement both. It wasn't too dark, it wasn't too light, and I didn't really want to take for, away from either stocking choice color that I chose, okay? So we'll just put that one there and then we'll place this one. And cause you know, it's a little quirky because that's just the way I is. is. All right, and I'm gonna move this up. And of course I can move this one up to at least the, uh, just before the top edge of this one because of the little uh, Vs at the top here, right? So I can scoot that up there, pin it in place. That way I'm optimizing the most of the stocking. Oh, poke your finger there. Be bleeding on the project. Blood, sweat, and tears. I'm telling you, folks. Blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> All right, and then just do a nice little applique stitch. Zigzag. Um, you have lots to choose from satin stitches, what have you. So we're just going to do a little quick on both of them here, and then I'll show you the both, and then we'll be done, okay? I can't wait till next week when we start sewing this together, and I can show you how easy it's gonna be via your machine. We're gonna do uh, row by row by row, and then add the one that was for your house to my house, you know, that your house to my house to yours, that one, okay? All right, so wake this up. So a zigzag or applique stitch, it's your choice. Okay, I like that one. Sorry, I'm just gonna have a little sup tea here. It was cold today. Like minus 16 with the wind chill. It's cold. All right. Is that, is that too fast there, Pop? Is that better? Yeah, okay. I'm trying to try a new position for the camera. And I want people to get a nice good view of what I'm working on. And I'm just doing a nice stitch all the way around. Now you can choose a green thread, a red thread. If you want to make this pop, sing, diggity dang do, whatever, use a, um, you know, a metallic thread. Uh, I think I'm going to add, like I said, I've got sequins and beads and everything else. Once we have this quilted uh, via the machine, I'm going to add all those little, you know, bibbity bobs and that'll just be like as an extra little post we won't do a video on it but you'll just see you know how I how I blinged up the quilt <laughs> I mean for two dollars for a big pack of beads it's gonna go a long way and it's gonna add so much it's not like it's ever gonna get washed this has never been a wash it's hanged over hung hanged over it's hung over uh, church pews and it has hung up at Christmas concerts and you know stuff like that so you know it's not gonna really get in the wash machine and it has the cutest fabric on the back side of it hold on, let me just move my phone um is the moose and uh beaver and chipmunk and squirrel or whatever it is it, i just you know it's really cute it's one of my favorites and of course it's flannel <laughs> it's very cute all right, where was I going? I was going around the toe. Okay. So that was last year's. We had a lot of fun putting that together. Got a lot of input and help from uh, Pop Sister. So that was very helpful on that part. You know, this, every block means something very special to us. Same with this quilt here. We don't do it if it doesn't mean something special to us. All right, it's coming around the toe, doing the bottom. And of course, you can use any sort of funky Christmas fabric you like. We have lots of the, cra uh, you know, the cardinal fabric here in the shop. I could have used two cardinals, but I, I like the bears. I love bears. Bears are Christmas. Bears and stars. Bears wearing sweaters. Like, come on, bears wearing sweaters. <laughs> you know, why not? And I thought they're really nice of uh, on the dark blue fabric to tie still in the, the, the blues all together in this nice light um, with the bears and the stars. And to me, it was very pretty. And that's why I thought, oh, you know, a nice little green cuff would look fabulous. 
and tie in a little bit more of the greens because he's got a lot of greens in his sweaters and his, uh, in his scarves. And then Pop really liked this cardinal fabric. And we didn't have a lot of it. It was just a bit, oops, got my little, my little thing. My cuff was off, Kim. Um, so it was just enough to make a boot, just enough to make a stocking out of. Sorry if my hand was in the way. Okay. Now don't forget when you're stopping and pivoting on the corners, make sure your needle's down. That way it's not going anywhere. You can move, somebody calls, the cat goes crazy, you know, cuts, gets caught in your sweater. It's not moving anywhere and you're not gonna move any stitches out of the way. Needle down. Best tip I can give you, needle down whenever you're lifting your foot up and shifting anything around. All right. Okay. Take the pin out. Now, I kind of like that this is kind of dimensional this way. It's kind of free and it's it's fun loving because like I said, this is just gonna, something that's just gonna hang in the quilt shop. And of course, we're just gonna keep making each one. Each, each year we're gonna do a, a little quilt along. I'm not sure how we're gonna run out of blocks, but <laughs> we'll have to make up some of our own. But isn't that cute? I love that. That's my stocking, okay? Now we're gonna attach pops, okay? And we'll do the same thing all the way around, but just in that little classic toe shape fashion, okay? And this is another place, if you, if you know this is just gonna be a wall hanging, you could have left the top open here, like it stitched all the way around, all the way here, left the top open and stuffed it. Put stuffing in there, make it three dimensional and then stitched across the top. You didn't have to be huge or anything like that, but that would be fun and tactile for the kids and the grandkids to, you know, fun looking at that or something if it was a donation to a church or, you know, kindergarten school or something like that. It'd be fun for them to be able to feel the stuffing of the stocking, you know? Be, is it full of goodies? <laughs> I don't know, just, just an idea I was thinking about when I was building the block. I thought, oh, that'd be kind of fun. But I figured we had to get it underneath our sewing machine to sew it all up. So it might be, uh, might be a good idea maybe just to, just to mention it, <laughs> but not necessarily do it. All right. Even though there was just a tiny little curve for that heel, I still stopped and pivoted with the needle down and shifted with the foot, okay? And as it comes here, it's getting close to the curve. You can only do so much, and then you're gonna actually have to lift your foot. Like right about there, okay. And it just helps position the fabric a little bit better. Nothing gets puckered under here, nothing's gonna get jammed. You know, if you just kind of lift your foot, Help spread it with your fingers. Take your time. Reposition. You know, if you have to do it 15 times on a toe, it's better to do that than have to rip out your stitches and try again. Though that's always something you can do because the seam ripper is your best friend and a superhero. <laughs> Shazam! <laughs> Check out the website if you like a Shazam shirt. Love it. My little sewing students are like, can we get one? I'm like, I told them, where to go to the website. I don't, it's not like I have them stocked here. It's all Angie's. It's all Angie's baby. It's her beautiful idea. Okay, see like here would be a great part if you wanted to stuff it, you know, you have that chance, right? Or even leave it open and it becomes a, uh, say if it's an advent calendar, you turn your quilt into an advent calendar. Pro candy canes, chocolates, candies, that sort of thing would be a great idea. You know, each stocking could be a different day. You know, you got three to choose from. You can mix it up, mix and match. You can have a lot of fun. Okay, do a little tack stitch there to make sure we're not going to lose our stitches. And I'm going to zip across the top of here. Once I move the pin, and this pin, and this pin, and we'll just do our little ziggity zag or applique stitch across. Love the stars with that little cardinal. That's beautiful. 
What's that other bird, though? Because it doesn't seem to be a cardinal. Maybe you guys know. I can see the cardinal in the toe, but I don't know what the other one is. I'll show it up to the camera so you can really take a look. Because I really thought it was just cardinal fabric until I, start, until I started cutting it out. What do you think? Isn't that beautiful? I like pop stock and block. Beautiful. All right. Hopefully you can tell me what kind of bird that is. These two right here. Oh, sorry. Right there. I know that's cardinal, and then there was the uh, female cardinal down there. But I got her. I didn't, I didn't get her in the boot, so... But that's it. Those are your two blocks. And when you place them, which I will include pictures next week or before next week of how I've laid it out on the floor, how I'm going to lay mine out. But you, of course, have the option to choose to put yours any way you like. As long as you get your four blocks, four blocks, four blocks, four blocks, four blocks, your five rows of four, and then your home a whole, like my from my house to yours, whichever way you're going to do it, either the left hand side or the right hand side, gets attached to that last. We'll be attaching that last. So it's going to be the five rows of four that we're going to sew those together. And that, but you know, just next week, okay? So just be prepared. But you're going to have to make room in your little layout for these right here, okay? And now I did square up each of my blocks. Uh, two 13 and a half by 13 and a half. I did add the three of the small stars all to one block. I put one in the center and then two up above. And then the other three big stars are all on their own. I just blocked them out differently, but you'll see by the via, via the pictures, okay? So thank you very much for watching this whole Quilt Along series. We've had such a blast with you. We really appreciate it. In fact, it fills our heart secret word last h-e-a-r-t heart with joy that you have quilted along with us okay so we'll see you uh now okay now just a little note you have only 48 hours 48 from right now literally like right now to get all your words in there's only 12 it's not that hard you can watch all the videos it's not like, well, there, well, there are secret words, but you know, and uh, if you need to know, uh, uh, there, it'd be the, the link via the show more section or the something I, that pop told me up here and he's laughing behind you. I'm really sorry. Uh, now I feel like I got horns. Pardon? I card. Sorry, iCard up here somewhere and the thingamabobbers in there. And like I said, all the uh, measurements and stuff will be available on Sunday. And you only have 48 hours from December 9th, midnight. Okay, December 9th, 2017 to enter in all your words. Okay, so good luck. I can't wait to draw the name for the tree skirt and whether which one you choose, whether it's going to be this one or that one because they're, they're both beautiful. And, and then, of course, there's the second prize and the third prize, which I'll be taking pictures of the fabrics that we have in the quilt shop so the winner can choose uh, a fat quarter from you know, five different fabrics, whatever they choose. Or if they want just a yard of whatever one fabric, I'll give that to them too, okay? So, all right, have a great Saturday and we will see you tomorrow for the live stream where we're gonna start working on our red scrappy quilt. Yay! I think I'm gonna incorporate a little bit gray into it because I have a bit of gray left over for some projects. So I think I'm gonna, it's gonna be red and gray. Red and gray is the project, okay? Take care everybody, have a fantastic day and we will see you tomorrow. In a three, two, one. <laughs> the most dramatic answers I've ever begun. Okay. <laughs> I need some Christmas music. I need to jam out with some Christmas music. Ah! Okay, anyway, moving on. I really thought I was ready. Drama in this place! The drama!